What if I told you that our entire existence could be simulated with a simple game? A game so basic, it only has three rules, yet capable of simulating infinite complexity. One of the biggest lies of our modern world is that complexity arises from complex things. This, however, could not be further from the truth. Complexity often arises from simple rules that are allowed the space to grow and evolve independently rather than being constrained. The more rules you add, the more restrictive a system becomes. This is exactly why, despite the apparent simplicity of the game, it has been used to model extremely complex systems such as a fully programmable computer, and even life itself. This game is so sophisticated that it has been proven Turing complete. In other words, theoretically, it is capable of computing anything that is possible to compute. So how is this possible? How can a game with just three rules and two states simulate the entire universe? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how, using the version of Conway's Game of Life I built with Minecraft. But before we do that, I want to say a huge thank you to the channel members. If you're interested in becoming a member yourself, hit the join button below the video. The original inspiration for the game came from Hungarian-American mathematician John von Neumann, who in the 1940s was highly interested in creating a hypothetical self-replicating machine, much like Conway's version. Von Neumann's game also took place on a grid of cells, but whereas Conway's game had only two states per cell, von Neumann's had 29. The idea was that the configuration of cells would be able to create a copy of that same configuration somewhere else on the grid, using only the rules allowed by the simulation. Inspired by this idea of self-replicating cellular automaton, Conway created his version of the game in 1970. Conway's version was much more refined, having only two possible states and three rules. The game quickly caught the attention of Scientific American, a popular science magazine, making its first appearance in the October 1970 issue in Martin Gardner's Mathematical Games column. Due to the many inexpensive computers entering the market at the time, it was quickly picked up by computer enthusiasts due to its relative simplicity and impressive graphical patterns. This all culminated in the game becoming a widely used tool across the scientific community by both professionals and hobbyists alike. Conway's Game of Life is played out on an infinite two-dimensional grid of cells, where each cell has two states, alive, and dead. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? True or false? One or zero? On or off? The same core idea behind computers themselves. Binary. The game runs in generations, but there are no actual players. The only human input required is the initial configuration and updating the game state according to the rules. Because we're running this on a computer, players are no longer required to manually update the game state. However, an initial configuration of cells is still needed. So what are these three rules? What is the secret behind this game's seemingly endless complexity? Well, here they are. The birth rule, death rule, and survival rule. The birth rule dictates that any cell with exactly three live neighbors, i.e. adjacent live cells, will become alive in the next generation. The death rule states two things. Isolation and overpopulation. Isolation is when a cell has fewer than two live neighbors. On the other hand, overpopulation happens when a cell has more than three live neighbors. If either of these conditions are met, the cell will die, hence the name death rule. The final rule is the survival rule, which states that any cell with two or three live neighbors will remain alive into the next generation. So what do these rules actually look like in practice? There have been many studies done around the game of life, and many mathematicians have been able to find new and interesting arrangements of cells. These arrangements are called objects, and there are three fundamental classifications. Still lifes, oscillators, and spaceships. Still lifes do not change from one generation to the next. They're in a stable configuration, meaning all the cells in the object satisfy the survival rule, but not the death or birth rules. Oscillators are configurations of cells that return to their original state after a certain number of generations. Finally, we have spaceships, which as the name implies, are able to move across the game board. They are similar to oscillators as they return to their original form, but do so at a certain distance away from their starting position. Let's have a look at a few of these objects in practice. Here we have three common types of still life, the block, the beehive, and the loaf. As we can see, they remain static even over the course of multiple generations. Next, let's take a look at a few oscillators. Here we have the blinker and the toad, both of which return to their original state in just two generations. Some oscillators take longer, like this one called the pulsar, which takes three generations. A few take even longer, like this one called the pentadecathlon, which takes a whopping 15 generations, penta meaning 5, deca meaning 10. Finally, let's take a look at some spaceship formations. What we have here is called the glider, 
It's the most basic form of spaceship, and it moves diagonally across the board. The glider was discovered by Conway himself while studying a formation called the R. Pentamino. The R. Pentamino is what's called a Methuselah, which is just a configuration of cells that takes many generations to stabilize. If we run this configuration, we can see gliders breaking off throughout the course of the simulation. Another interesting configuration is the Gosper gliding gun, discovered in 1970 by Bill Gosper was the first gun ever discovered. This configuration makes use of different objects to create an infinite stream of gliders. There are many more configurations, and new ones are being constantly discovered. However, they all function on the same basic rules that these simple objects do. Unfortunately, Conway passed away in 2020 at the age of 82, but there's no doubt about the significant impact he had on the scientific community. The game of life may well be one of the most extraordinary games ever created. It is capable of simulating a vast number of different situations, and theoretically, it can simulate anything. A game so simple, yet with so much hidden complexity, that its creator called it life. Thank you for watching. Hey everyone, this is an editor's note here. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. It's a bit different from the ones I usually make, so let me know what you thought of it down in the comments, and maybe I'll make a couple more of these videos in the future.